it's began quite a lot with just the myth of Oliver and Wolfgang uh, looking at the story and sort of thinking like what is it telling us today because of course it was uh, written quite a while ago but it doesn't mean that you're you have to have the same worldview as he did back in the day so we were just trying to approach this and sort of like what how is this relevant for us today how can we tell this story so we can bring sort of our um, our sense of the world into it and this was sort of what came sort of how we are really destroying our own world and how we are being our own worst enemies and we don't learn from the past we keep on doing the same and same thing over and over again so it's sort of visually showing you a self-destructiveness in a very very high degree so that was the reason that i wanted Andre to come along on this journey with me because when you're working with something so big and it's quite new to approach it this way you're limiting yourself artistically if you don't have all the tools that you that you could have so that's why his input both his knowledge on sustainability and his creative use of sustainability has done a lot. Did you already work on these ones now? Or? Uh, no, I think these ones need I the will. highlights. You worked on this. I worked on this. It was through my master education that I started experimenting with reusing already made objects or using waste or trash to, to create something new, but also to kind of dive into the theoretical element of sustainability. Like, what is it other than just organizing our trash in the right bucket? Like, it's, it has a lot of emotional value because it's so relevant to the world we live in today because it, it reflects the state of how we treat everything. Um, and not, not only just like the environment, by being wasteful, it's also connected to uh, a system that is inherently broken and we need to be able to step back completely and see the cracks in the system to become more sustainable. We used a lot of scraps that are normally just like little bits that are thrown out. We used them a lot for to get like a visual effect, for example, on the suits. Then we used maybe really old costumes that were torn and weren't very likely to be used in order to make all the sort of effects. And like Andre has already told you, like the suits are, I think, 99% from the fundus. These are suits from the fundus that we had collected because we didn't want to buy anything new. We would just rather collect old ones and work on that to kind of, yeah, be as less wasteful as we possibly can. And making 60 new suits, because it's about 60 people in, in total for this costume, that would just be very uh, resource heavy. This is what we call the infections of the Grail Knights in Parsifal. And because they are so uh, over consumed by themselves and, and their capitalistic consumption, they have become infected. And these infections are kind of like oozing out of their characters. Um, kind of symbolizing the patriarchy maybe or, or, or yeah, Western capitalism and masculinity. So we used uh, old costumes and fabric scraps to kind of like establish uh, uh, like a foundation for some textile manipulation. And then we've been using heat or uh, heat guns to melt other fabric scraps that we've kind of collected from the house to, tech, to paint it and texturize it over. You can see it a little bit here also. We like have the materials sewn in into the wound. Then we flip it on the other side, burn it, and then we place other materials in it and burn it again. And then it's been like a, a play with kind of like pushing it back inside. So it's also pushing the suit out and kind of creating this illusion that this is coming out of their bodies and through the suit as like an infected wound or mold or, or fungi or something would do. All of it was, uh, yeah, innovated in this studio. We just came here with an open mind and some sort of direction about where we wanted to go. But there were just, yeah, days where we were just like bringing out our inner child and playing around with textiles and tools and, and seeing 
yeah, what would happen. We limit ourselves by not buying new materials, but at the same time, that makes our imagination be, be able to run free. If you're going to apply this sort of method specifically to a big group like that, you just uh, need to have more minds sort of uh, working on it. It's too limited to be in your own little head. And I mean, theater is a big, big collaboration. It's amazing how it happens so often that a full finished piece goes on stage. There are so many people that come to it. So it's really just having like one person that has a different approach to things. It can bring a, a new sort of nuance into it. It's just been a great verification of seeing that there is, uh, there doesn't seem to be a limit to working in this way. The only limit is, is not doing it or is thinking that it's not possible. You don't have to be destructive to be creative. Like you can find other solutions and spend resources on, on manpower and knowledge rather than materials. And I think that's, that's a step in the right direction in, in many ways.